Lecture 2B, we look at the aspects of good governance in 2010 constitution. That is the one that pro was pro promulgated in 2010. Some of the aspects, good governance, equal participation, independence of judiciary, supremacy of constitution, democracy, social equity. Those are some of the good aspects in the 2010 constitution that we are going to actually look at. So, one of the aspects of the new constitution that promote good governance, governance. The concept of governance can be tracked to human civilization. According to Mu, governance means decision making and implementing process. All right, decision making. Many people cannot make a decision. Many people do not know how to make decision. Good governance means you use a constitution to make a good decision. Not through whims, not through feelings, not just because you have friends no that's why the constitution is very important we got to follow the spirit of the constitution and that's why we say it is actually the constitution that should guide us not that i am your father i'm your uncle i'm your friend no we have to make decisions and implement the processes based on the constitution so you're not coming from a particular tribe or a particular region and say i'll give them more resources because i'm the president i'll give them more resources because i grew up there no follow the constitution and that's what good governance is all about following the constitution governance is applicable in several contexts such as corporate governance international governance national governance local governance <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about what governance is. Since governance is the process of decision making and implementing, an analysis of governance focuses on actors involved in decision making and implementing the decision. So the actors are very important. And in our case, there are quite a couple politicians are there. We have the civil society plays an important role, even the people. But as you can see, number four, government is the main actor, among other actors, okay? You know also the judiciary is important. You know that the parliament is important. That's why we have the three arms of the government. So governance is multifaceted. We have a number of actors who have got to be involved, so to speak. A dictator government does not involve those, but in a democracy you need to actually involve all actors so we start with the first aspect good governance we say that 2010 uh, constitution has very many good aspects and one of it is good governance while there's no uniform definition of good governance there's a criteria to justify the level of good governance and what is this criteria good governance means competent management of country resources and affairs in a manner that is one open two transparent three accountable four equitable five responsive to people's needs those terms of open transparent accountability equitable and responsive to people's need are the key in terms of governance any good governance will talk about is it open is it transparent everybody can see so it's not opaque is it uh, accountable to the people? Can they s understand and see? Uh, is it uh, involving everybody? As, uh, is the national cake being shared or some are getting more? And whatever is being done, is it from the leader's uh, own perspective or the people? There you have an onogram of what good governance is, rule of law, transparency consensus oriented accountability effectiveness and efficiency equity inclusiveness responsiveness participation that's why even in my groups i tell you hey we want to have the face of kenya we want to have gender equity and if we could we could also add some but it gets complicated but good governance means you actually have inclusivity when good governance is established in a state, people can easily guess it by some of its characteristics. Can you guess whether Kenya has got uh, good governance? What would you say? Looking at uh, these characteristics, what would you say about Kenya? Participation? Do we have good governance? 
is their participation i talk about public participation do you think it is meaningful rule of law transparency responsiveness consensus oriented equity inclusiveness effectiveness and efficiency accountability can all these be easily noticed are they uh, out there can the local person or the uh, what is referred to as wanjiku and go actually realize notice them that's the question that you need to ask we continue with good governance what's the world bank say about it it says good governance addresses economic institutions and public sector management including the following transparency and accountability you see those terms keep coming again regulatory reform mm -hmm. public sector skills and finally leadership those are the terms uh, sectors that go with good governance you can see there the Vengram good governance what does it consider same terms effective collaboration performance orientation and uh, openness transparency integrity those are measures that can help you see about your country we have a new president right in what do you think in terms of governance secondly we have participation the other aspect of good the other aspect of good uh, governance and the constitution good governance requires the participation of both men and women in every sector of life and that article 27 in the new constitution what does it provide every person is equal before the law doesn't matter how rich that might be on paper though we know the rich can buy the law we know the rich or those in uh, politics can actually buy the law we know those with influence can buy the law and that's one of the things that we need to deal with but uh, it's much better than when we had the independence constitution so every person is equal before the law and has the right to equal protection and equal benefit of the law what does equality include full and equal enjoyment of all rights and fundamental freedom i would say as a youth you need to fight for your rights you need to fight for your fundamental freedoms you never are given i'll tell you one thing at my age i now know nothing is given in the banquet table of life you have to organize and mobilize you have to demand your rights so if you're going to sit there and say well i don't like politics well i don't do politics think again once you're born you're already in politics they affect your school fees they affect where you're gonna live they affect your college they affect your career so you better just get in Equal participation, men and women have the right to equal treatment, including the right to equal opportunities in politics, economics, cultural and social spheres. That's why we're pushing a lot about women empowerment, women get into politics. That's why we have the new constitution, even he gives lots to women, one third. Okay, the state shall not discriminate directly or indirectly against any person on the following ground, race, sex, pregnancy, marital status, health status, ethnic or social origin, color, age, disability, religion, concerns, belief, culture, dress, language or birth. Did you know that? That's why even in your application or your CV, you don't even have to write your religion. You don't even have to write your age. You don't even have to write your race. If you know you are right and I ask you at the job, you say, well, the constitution actually provides that. Uh, I don't have to write that because you might discriminate according to religion, could you discriminate according to age. But I think most people in Kenya don't know that. When I was in the US, I got to discover that you might not even want to write your sex. You might just leave it blank, optional. Because somebody might actually discriminate according to uh, those uh, what we call demographic markers. More on equal participation, a person shall not discriminate directly or indirectly against another person on any of the grounds specified or contemplated in the clause 4. We talked about those. And finally, to give full effect to the realization of the rights guaranteed under this article, the state shall take legislative and other measures, including affirmative action programs and policies to design to redress any disadvantages suffered by individuals or groups because of past discrimination 
We have people living with disabilities now. They are really top on the agenda. You can even see the buildings now. You have to make sure you have uh, or you are catering for the disabled. There used to be stairs where the disabled were actually seriously hampered. But now you find that you have to construct a building such that you'll have a walkway for the disabled. Even the roads are doing that. But we still have a big problem when it comes to vehicles. I think there has to be a law where we have public service vehicles to operate. They must have provisions for people living with disability. There is also the aspect of gender. That's why we have seats nomination for women. It's only unfortunate. I think women should work harder. Let the affirmative action not make them just wait for those nomination seats. That's my tech because uh, at times it looks like uh, when you have affirmative action and you take uh, that path seems like of least resistance that's my take though what do you think you can also uh, take a peek at that sadly independence of the judiciary remember the other three arms executive legislature and the judiciary judiciary is very important in that if it is swallowed by the executive, then we actually are in trouble. Why? There has there'll be the aspect of justice, and justice is a very key element in good governance. Because people will be oppressed, the government can do what it wants since it has the judiciary. The government cannot be checked, or there'll be no balances. The government can appoint who it wants. The government can allocate budgets that are not uh, or projects that are not uh, responsive to the people so independence of judiciary is very very important and as i pointed in earlier uh the video i guess we have a robust judiciary if we could have the presidential elections nullified and uh, thanks to the former cj maraga who was strong enough and did that then i'll say the independence of the judiciary but we still have some more work to do and the judiciary enjoys full freedom under good governance, okay? Article 160 of the Constitution says that in the exercise of judicial authority, the judiciary as constituted by Article 161 shall be subject only to this Constitution and the law and shall not be subject to control or direction of any personal authority. This used to be happening in the old Constitution where the president would muzzle the judiciary the judiciary will actually be in the pockets of the president and it was difficult to get justice but this is a good aspect of the new constitution the office of a judge of a superior court shall not be abolished while there's a substantive holder of the office right so there's no way you can actually the president can sack or can abolish that office but in the old constitution it used to happen remuneration and benefits payable to or in respect of judges shall be a charge on the consolidated fund that means they actually are not subject to the whims of the, the exchequer they have their budget and they can actually pay themselves and according to what is set independence of the judiciary and uh, we have the third subject to article 168 the remuneration and the benefits payable to or in respect of a judge shall not be varied to the disadvantage of that judge the retirement benefits of a third judge shall not be varied to the disadvantage of the third judge during the lifetime of that judge this is the case where you know the president or the legislature tries to actually manipulate the judge by making sure they're disadvantaged so that they can actually answer to their whims no it is actually set by the Justice uh, Judiciary Service Commission and it is fixed. A member of the judiciary is not liable in an action or suit in respect of anything done or omitted to be done in good faith in the lawful performance of the judicial action. That's why Maraga went scot-free despite that the president at one time threatened and said we'll actually get back to the judiciary. And they got back to him actually by lowering the budget some sort of repression during Uhuru's uh, regime and we're looking to see what happens during uh, Dr. Ruto's uh, regime. It's very, I want to say easy, but to gravitate to those areas because, you know, democracy demands quite a lot of patience. It demands uh, 
time there is all voices have to be heard sometimes you want to move fast and you can actually muzzle the independence of the judiciary they actually denied miguna miguna to come back despite the court orders one thing that uh, uhuru's government was notorious for was actually ignoring court orders which is detrimental to the independence of the judiciary all right still another aspect supremacy of constitution what is the supremacy good governance endorses the supremacy of, i mean nobody is above the constitution even the president okay article 2 of the constitution provides the constitution is the supreme law of the republic and binds all persons all state organs adopt both levels of government so even the president is bound by the constitution however this might be on paper sometimes the president take advantage no person may claim or exercise state authority except as authorized under this constitution the validity or legality of this constitution is not subject to challenge by or before any court or other state organ right so the supremacy of the constitution very important it's the topmost it's the uh, compact between the people and those who are to govern the people so it should not be mutilated it should not be played around it should be the supreme it's not the politician that should be supreme any law including customary law that is inconsistent with this constitution is void to the extent of inconsistency that's the supremacy of the law there general laws of international law shall form part of the law of kenya okay so we are not actually dealing in a vacuum any treaty or convention ratified by kenya shall form part of the law of the kenya under this constitution okay the other aspect is the rule of law good governance maintains the rule of law in the country right the preamble of kenya constitution says for the rule of law it provides the following preamble of the constitution with the people of kenya one acknowledging the supremacy of the almighty god of all creation two honoring those who regularly struggle to bring freedom and justice to our land proud of our ethnic cultural religious diversity determined to live in peace and unity as one indivisible sovereign nation respectful of the environment all these are in the preamble of the kenyan constitution you want to read them because they are actually talking about the rule of law. and more about the rule of law what does the preamble say committed to nurturing and protecting the well-being of the individual family communities and the nation further recognizing aspiration of all kenyans okay and especially on the essential values of human rights equality freedom democracy social justice and the rule of law exercising our sovereign and inalienable right to determine the form of governance of our country and having participated fully in the making of this constitution i don't know whether you really exercise your inalienable inalienable rights to determine the form of governance of your country your county because if you are silent if you are actually uh, a non participant they ask you to come and uh, to the county assembly so that you can comment on the budget you can comment on the CADP county integrated development program uh, plan and you don't then really you are not actually exercising that sovereign right adopt an act and give this constitution to ourselves and to our future generation other aspect is democracy good governance guards democracy and guarantees political stability in the country article 19 of the constitution states about states the following about democracy the bill of rights bill of rights remember you actually have a right and it is an integral part of Kenya's democratic state and if you don't know your rights then you are actually in danger because you can be oppressed when you shouldn't i ask you a question do you know what your rights are when the police arrest you do you know your rights when the police is caning you should the police cane you should the police harass you when they are actually arresting you what should happen when somebody says is the police and comes to your place and wants to search it what should they want have can just they not just say it they have to have a warrant and these are things you need to know you even need to know what does your mca really require what is their job what is the job of the mp does he really build roads or is a legislator or he is making laws 
Does he even have the money to build a road? Is he telling you lies when he says he'll build a road? These are things you need to check and be well conversant. Democracy too. The purpose of recognizing and protecting human rights and fundamental freedoms is to preserve the dignity of individuals and communities and to promote social justice and the realization of the potential of all human beings. <coughs> democracy, finally, what does the democracy say? Another aspect. The rights and fundamental freedoms in the Bill of Rights belong to each individual and not grant, granted by the state. So they belong to you. And the state cannot take your rights. Do not exclude other rights and fundamental freedoms not in the Bill of Rights, but recognize or confirmed by the law, except to the extent that they are inconsistent with this chapter. So you have rights. Unfortunately, I know most of my students don't even know their rights. It's, it's, it's a bit unfortunate. You know you have the right to keep quiet in a court of law. Do you know you have the right to good health, to education? Anyway, a subject only to the limitation contemplated in this constitution. It's important that you know your rights. I cannot emphasize enough because once you know your rights, then you can know how to actually exercise them, how to actually exercise your democracy. Social equity is another aspect. Equal distribution of resources among the federal federating units of the country has to be made possible in a country having good governance. When the government uh, was under the independence constitution, there were areas in this government or this country that were marginalized. Notably, Wajir, uh, Garissa, Moyale, it was like you're going to Somalia. Why? Because there was no equal distribution. The government was centralized and the central uh, province was more endowed. Many parts of the coast also were marginalized, including Taita. There were many areas also of uh, uh, areas of the eastern province, Tarakaniti. Why? Because either you're not supporting the current government or just the government is not actually planning effectively. Or it might be planning, but the people at the central government withhold those resources. That's why a devolved government is a good send in this 2010 constitution. Article 43 of the constitution provides every person has the right to the highest attainable standards of one health, which includes the right to health care services, including reproductive health care. That's why... The government right now works very hard to provide universal health. County governments are working hard to make sure everybody gets access and adequate uh, uh, health. Secondly, accessible and adequate housing to reasonable standard of sanitation. Sad that we have so many people living in the ghettos. Even in villages. We have people who are living in deplorable condition. The government needs to provide access and adequate housing. One of the big four of Uhuru was housing. How much he succeeded, I don't know. We wait to see what uh, Dr. Ruto will do. Another, to be free from hunger and to have adequate food of acceptable quality. So you know you're not supposed to be hungry. That's why the government is distributing food at this particular time. We have a very unfortunate incident in Taita Taveta when there is hunger. The MCAs took to themselves, 21 of them went to enjoy themselves in Zanzibar, squandering 8 million shillings. That's your leaders. That's how unfortunate it is. I'm hoping that justice will be meted. We have Jeremiah Kivoi, who's actually put a case, and I'm also part of one of those who sing how we can push so that either they are surcharged or they actually are uh, brought to a court of law. Because it's, it's, it's unfair, really, when people are starving in Taita and you're taking a trip to Zanzibar, you know? People should be free from hunger. People should have access to clean and safe water in adequate quantities. Water, water, water. It's a big issue all over the country. They should also have access to social security and to education. Is your help enough? Are you getting uh, adequate money to actually support your education? That's why you need to actually uh, agitate or mobilize and see what you should uh, get and uh, 
be more active, right? A person shall not be denied medi emergency medical treatment, even in a private hospital. If you fall down or you fainted, you can even go to Nairobi Hospital and you need to be given emergency medical treatment, even if you don't have the money. Did you know that? The state shall provide appropriate social security to persons who are unable to support themselves, and uh, and that's why by Uhuru, you no know, Raila was saying six thousand for the elderly. I think they are getting two thousand at the moment. Uh, that's what uh, Kibaki government did, and uh, we hope Ruto will. <laughs> So those are the aspects of good governance uh, that we have, there are about six of them, uh, you can look at them, a good uh, constitution should actually make sure that governance is under those tenets, you know, social equity, we've looked at the independence of the judiciary, you look at the aspect of how uh, participation, it's not that only a few participate, that's why we have public participation now, a big word where you can come in, put on your views about uh, what you think your county should do, and so on and so on. All right, we stop there. Bye for now.